I don't think it's me this time. Ah, uh, no. <laughs> That's good. Hey, good day, big bikers! Ah, <laughs> we're heading up into the hills to the other Mount Lofty Ranges. So, if you've been paying attention uh, over the last few videos, I've been riding in places that have been pretty open and flat, and uh, lots of backcountry roads and dirt roads, and um, not many hills. So, uh, I've relocated and now I'm up in the Mount Lofty Ranges so looking forward to exploring around here for a, a couple of weeks I think the weather's uh, finally come good and uh, I'm just really really looking forward to exploring uh, the Fleuria Peninsula which is where we're on so Lofty Ranges basically uh, follow the Fleuria Peninsula down and I'm staying at kind of near Mount Compass which is halfway between kind of Victor Harbour and Adelaide, so that just give you some geography as to where I am. Nice to be in the hills again. But uh, oh, it's been such a really crazy weather. It, it has absolutely been just like the weather has been just so I decided to be cold one day, rainy the next hot the next day, you know, it goes from like 13 degrees to 38 degrees, it's just, it's just crazy, and the wind has just been blowing, so I haven't actually been doing too much riding, um, and I haven't really even been, I, look, I did make a couple of videos, I was really, really unhappy with them, I, I watched them a few times and thought, you know, they're just, ugh. the driveways down around here. Oh, that's really off camber there. Get, get over here. But now I'm in the middle of the road, so... <laughs> Country. <laughs> it's just freaking out. Taking my pet kangaroos for a walk. <laughs> Like it's it's it is that time of day, so I've just taken it really really easy. Uh, I've actually it was actually quite a warm day today uh, for a change. I'm slowly working my way west, so we're now mid-November. So um, school's going to be finishing soon, and school holidays, and the beaches are going to be crowded, the roads are going to be busy. So I'm just going to find somewhere that I can settle down. Uh, for a few weeks, get out of the road, I suppose, more than anything else. So the good thing about daylight saving is you can actually go out riding in the cool of the afternoon. I mean, it's not, uh, I mean, sunset's not till 8 o'clock tonight. It's only, oh, it's quarter to 6. Not going to be a big ride today. Just wanted to bring you up to date with what's been going on. I missed getting a video out last week. Um, I didn't miss it. I did one, but I just, you know, it was not... You know, I, I, I didn't, I didn't like it, so I didn't put it up. Um, I didn't, <laughs> I didn't even put it up on the Facebook page. It was that bad. But anyway, I'm, uh, what I'll do? Oh, I think that's the road on. Yep. Actually, goes anywhere? This is no through road. Uh, yeah, and South Australian roads are generally no through roads, so. Uh, oh, I didn't drop the bike. Very close to dropping the bike. So 
so the thing I'm liking about daylight saving is that you know the sun doesn't go down till 8 o'clock so plenty of daylight to go riding and you can actually wait for the heat of the day to go and uh, go riding in the cool of the evening the only problem with that is um, you know that's where all the roos come out so uh, and particularly riding into the sun uh, heading west anyway you kind of get this stutter through the trees which is why um, ADV helmets got peaks so if you're riding through uh, tree areas like this you, you can actually just shade your eyes so that Conservation Park. Very steep climb ahead, not suitable for cars and trucks. Not cars and caravans and trailers. Oh well, we better go up there. Very steep descent. Park couldn't care less. <laughs> this looks like it might take me on a bit of a loop around to the road that I probably want to be on at this time of day. It'd be nice if it opened out into some nice country. How good's this? You can't see it but the ocean's just out there so I think we're so we must be heading west. Um, no uh, south, sorry. Got the sun over our right shoulder. The afternoon sun over our right shoulder, so heading south. We're actually going down the Fleurier Peninsula at the moment. I just uh, don't know these roads at all. looks pretty well trafficked even though it's just a dotted line on a map Tails up there. So, yeah, wow. So, I won't be putting the drone up, you know. Well, it is a conservation park, too, you know. Birds of prey. <laughs> but literally, wedge tailed eagles will take down a, a drone, no problem. Very territorial. really I mean they've cambered the road obviously to wash off the water but um, it just makes this left edge uh, really really dicey I'm reluctant while I'm going around right hand corners I'm reluctant to get over on the inside as well doesn't give me much room for error
shoes. Holy cow, there's a whole troop of them. Skippy, 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 the bush kangaroo. <laughs> Over that horizon there is the ocean. I'm just trying to peg which one that would be because we're kind of going down the Fleurier Peninsula. We're heading south down that. Um, so that's probably got to be over in the uh, Spencer Gulf. Or, what's the Gulf? The Air Peninsula, York Peninsula, Fleurier Peninsula. And in between the three of them, there's these two um, gulfs. So one's Spencer and the other's... country. It's so completely different. Completely different. Alrighty. I think I need to go this way. I didn't I didn't check the elevation when we were up top but we we're up on you can't see it here. On no, the range behind those trees. <laughs> spring brook, spring spring mount, mount spring, mount spring. As you've seen, there's plenty of roos around this afternoon, so I'm just taking it really, really steady. Um, there doesn't seem to be many carcasses on the uh, on the black stuff on the side of the road, but uh, I don't want to be putting myself in any risk at all. So it looks like this road goes back up the range, which is okay. It's kind of where I want to be. I want to be back up on the other side of that. Um, just. I just wanted to come out for a little ride. Bring you up to speed with what's been going on. Well, I'll tell you now. How about I tell you now? I was at Mount Gambia and I left Mount Gambia and I went down to Kingston SE and uh, I spent a few days um, beside the beach there at the jetty. But again, the, the weather, all, I'm going to put some drone footage in. But the weather looks like it's really nice, but it's absolutely howling. Uh, like a mad thing. So the drone was kind of tipped sideways trying to, even with a gimbal on it, couldn't uh, couldn't keep the horizon level. So, um, uh, but that was pretty cool. I had some lobster there, so I had some of that, which was very nice. Uh, and then I followed the, the coastline around to Robe, and then from uh, Robe, there's a pretty cool coastline there. I'll put a bit of drone footage in. Um, you know, again, really, really windy stuff. That coastline's really, really rugged and getting absolutely smashed. But it's a limestone coast, so quite soft. So the waves are just having their way with them. And uh, uh, very interesting. Uh, and then I went down to Lake Alexandrina. I actually went around Lake Alexandrina. Um, well, as much as I went around Lake Alexandrina. But Lake Alexandrina, if, you're, if you've been um, watching the series on Charles Sturt, you'll know that that was the termination point of his, uh, of, well it wasn't the termination point, it was the turnaround point of his um, trip down the Murray River. I wanted to get my head around why in 1829-1830 he thought that rowing 1500 kilometres back upstream to, you know, make it back to, uh, up to the, the Murrumbidgee River, why that was his best option and so I did some did some looking around and obviously 1830 um, Adelaide hadn't been settled that wasn't until about 1833 so there was no ships going along that way 
they, would, they couldn't get over to Adelaide. Um, Melbourne, even Melbourne, hadn't been settled. So that was 1835 when Port Phillip Bay was being settled. There were probably some sealers uh, on Kangaroo Island at the time, but he wouldn't have known that. So there was just no ships going past where he was at what is now Gulwa or Gulwa Beach. And so um, the closest place for him to get to probably would have been Hobart, you know, or maybe maybe somewhere at Devonport or Launceston in there. Uh, but, you know, there were nine men in a whaling boat. I don't think they were going to try and cross Bass Strait. So, you know, uh, like the safest option he considered for him and his crew were to actually row back upstream. Um, and when you when you get down there and you have a look at, at that lake, I mean, it was a big lake, and he spent a couple of weeks um, just down there, around there, and, and, uh, and checking the place out. Uh, interestingly enough, at Lake Alexandrina, there's Australia's only inland lighthouse. I mean, it's not active anymore, uh, but uh, uh, Point Malcolm, I think it's called, and uh, I was just, yeah, I, like flew the drone around there, and I stayed at um, Narang. I spent a couple of nights at Narang and uh, donating my blood to the local mosquitoes. It was pretty awful, actually. So on one side of the lake is uh, Point Malcolm, where the lighthouse is, and then on the other side of the lake is Point Sturt. Some, uh, records in his in his, um, his report that uh, you know they they stood on the top of that point it's not very high but it was elevated enough for them to have a look around and um, so we, I went there to stand where he stood uh, that was pretty cool and then I went up to Murray Bridge and from Murray Bridge I went up to um, Blanchetown apparently you call it I call it Blanchetown Blanchetown I went to Blanchetown uh, because that was the start point of Charles Sturt's 1844 expedition up into the interior where he went up through to uh, Milparinka and Timberborough and up into the Simpson Desert. But he started at uh, a place called Portee Station. Oh, was that it? Yes, it is. Oh, look at that. Hmm. Porty Station. That's one of those historical coloured signs. Is it brown? Private property. Oh, big padlock on it. Damn. Well, there you go. That's it. It's it's right here that um, they mustered all of the the men and the equipment and the animals and everything they were going to be taking on their trip, and they left. I think it was August. Oh, I'll put the right date in. They left in August or October in uh, 1844, and they walked up. Because if you if you're on this side of the Murray River, you go up to Morgan and round the corner. You don't need to cross the Murray River at any stage to get up into North um, Northern Australia because the Murray, obviously. So they go up and around the corner, and they followed the Murray along until they got to Lake Victoria. And it was there they followed the Anna Branch up to Menindee Lakes. And then from Menindee Lakes they walked up through the back of Broken Hill, uh, Pack Saddle, uh, Milparinka. And they got stuck at Milparinka. And from Milparinka they just explored north, south, east and west all around that area. And then when the weather permitted and they got the the, 
the water supply they needed. No, I think they were stuck there for about, uh, stuck at Milparinka for about eight or nine months. And they left Milparinka and then they went up to, uh, well, because they had Depot Glen there, of course, and they went up to Fort Grey, which is just up outside Timberborough, between Timberborough and Cameron Corner, as we know it today. And then from there they walked pretty much all the way up to what is now the Northern Territory border, a little bit further north than that. And um, and just exploring up in between the sand dunes, he called them sand ridges, but we now them know now know them as parallel dunes and the largest parallel uh, just desert parallel dune desert uh, in the world. And so they got, kind of got stuck in the middle of that uh, waterhole to waterhole uh, until they eventually um, uh, came back to uh, Fort Grey and then uh, back down to um, back, back down to here. Um, I think all up, it was about 14 months they were gone. It was uh, 1846 when they came back, but he, they were all in terrible condition from there. Uh, obviously, uh, James Poole died. Um, Charles Sturt had scurvy. Uh, the doctor had scurvy. Uh, John McDougall Stewart um, developed a name for himself. And uh, as as a as a very good um, draftsman and map maker, and uh, as we head further west from here, we'll start talking a little bit more about um, uh, John Stewart. But yeah, this is it. This is the start and finish point of that 1884 expedition. Um, so there you go. Which at the time belonged to. John Edward Eyre, so of the Air, Lake Eyre and Eyre Peninsula fame, so he was an explorer. He was the first guy to walk across the top of the Great Australian Bight, so he walked across what is now called the Nullarbor Plains. Um, but he got to Esperance, I think. There was a whaling vessel there and he got a lift back. Uh, but uh, his, his, he had a property and it was at 1844 when Charles Sturt left to go to the interior that they actually left from Port E Station. So that was the muster point where they put the sheep together, all the wagons, all the men, everyone met there. Yeah, so hi- history will tell you that he, uh, Charles Sturt left from Adelaide, and he did, and that's where all the receptions were and the farewells and all that sort of stuff. Uh, but in reality, like when we go riding, right, when we go riding um, on a big trip, you know, you kiss the kids goodbye, kiss the missus goodbye, and and take off. But the trip doesn't actually start until you meet up with your mates, and you have a coffee and a bit of a laugh, and and um, and, and that's kind of where um, that's when the trip starts. So the muster point for Charles Sturt was at Port East Station, which uh, which was pretty cool to stand there. Couldn't get in because the gate was locked, but um, it was interesting to uh, to go. That so I've, I've pretty much been. To all the places that Charles Sturt went to uh, on that 1844 trip, um, probably about 90% of them I reckon, so that was pretty cool. Anyway, so that's what's been going on, so uh, um, I'm, you know, like I said, I've got so much footage from all of that drive that I did that um, I want to try and put it into a video, but I couldn't kind of get it to come together properly so hopefully it'll ride around this afternoon through this new type of country uh, will be interesting enough to uh, to bring you up to speed with what's been going on but uh, it's been you know it's been a terrific a really really terrific um, time down in South Australia I'm absolutely loving it you guys got some just some great coastline pity you can't get in the water <laughs> Very nice. I don't need to get over the other side of that range there.
found the dirt again. see why the English wanted to settle here but you know it was, it was actually the Germans that, that really came and opened up this part of the country. Queensland, when there's a no through road sign on, uh, you know, a road, uh, it generally means you can't get a Corolla up there. You can get up in a bike or a four wheel drive or something, but it just means you can't go up in a Corolla. In South Australia, that's what a no through road sign, that's what the end of a no through road sign, double gated, no, no access, fire access only, private road, go away, not allowed in here. So, I've got to go back. So, yes, it did have a no through road sign on it, but my map kind of indicated that I might be able to get through. The road does go through to where I need to go to, but obviously because of the gates and stuff, you can't do that. The sun is getting very low. shortest way for me to go is back where I came, go back up that um, you know, the dirt road and then up over the top. That's kind of the shortest way to go this time of day. kangaroo friends were. So, just steady. Like there's no one on these back roads. <laughs> Crazy. Look at that.
I'm sure they have droughts here, but just at the moment it's just green and lush and it just looks rich. Oop, there's a big one. It was huge. Dry on the road, Stephen. Alright, that's probably it for me. I'm nearly back at the caravan actually. to be out and about, except for the kangaroos. Stone walls. Very nice looking property. There's obviously been some money around here at some stage. Probably still is. Thanks for tuning in, B-Bikers, and uh, I'll see you in the next video. Over and out.